Hi, I'm Dan Lindstedt, and I'm here to answer some of your most frequently asked questions on video. So hopefully this will give you some ideas as to where the data vault began, how it came about, and all of that. The first question I'd like to answer for you is, what is the difference between the data vault model and the star schema model? Now, we're not going to have time to get into all the differences, so I'm just going to cover some of the major points. Let's start out with the star schema model. The star schema model was originally built and designed to provide subject-oriented answer sets in rapid succession to small units of business. They didn't actually have anything in the original design or architecture that was equivalent to a type 1, a type 2, or a type 3. And they in fact didn't even have uh, degenerate dimensions or helper tables or snowflake designs. All of those things came later to make star schemas fit as an enterprise data warehouse model. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not against star schemas. I'm not saying you shouldn't use them. In fact, they're the number one business delivery solution for OLAP and for drill down and for business analysis today. So definitely, we should use them to deliver data to business users. They're easy to understand, but they shouldn't be used or applied as enterprise data warehouses. Now, let's switch over and take a look at the data vault. The data vault is designed specifically for use as an enterprise data warehouse. It's designed to be flexible and scalable and fault tolerant, and is specifically to fit inside of an enterprise data warehousing needs. Right? In regards to some of the more technical differences on the model, let's start with the dimension. You can often find dimensions to be a conglomeration of multiple fields and hierarchies, all kind of stuffed together around a single concept. Things like customer or product, or employee and boss, and so on, and where they work, maybe sales region, and sales region is attached to employee, and they're all hooked up to this supposedly single business key. Now, the single business key in, this, in a dimension can be composite, which is fine, but it's still supposed to represent a one-to-one -one mapping between the, or a one-to-many mapping, excuse me, between the business key and the surrogate key inside of the dimension, right? So the business key is the same, and the rest of the data, any one of those columns and the rest of the data set changes, the idea is to insert a brand new uh, dimension record. Right? So this is basically what a type 2 dimension is all about, to capture changes. Right? But the one thing that is very, very important is that the business key in the dimension is tightly coupled to the surrogate key in the dimension, as well as the remainder of the data set. All of that data set and all of those changes are tightly coupled in sequence to the actual surrogate key. And the surrogate key or the sequence key in a dimension is used specifically for join capacities. Okay, now let's take a look over at the data vault. The data vault has a similar table called satellite. However, the satellite is inverted from what you're used to. Inverted by the satellite depends on its parent. In other words, it depends on a hub or a link to produce the surrogate key. And that's where it actually gets its information from. Okay, so it allows flexibility uh, in the satellite for us to uh, handle different rates of change across the data sets. Now, moreover than that, we have abstracted the business key out, so the business keys reside in hubs. So no longer are the business keys tightly coupled with the remainder of the satellite data or the dimension data, as you might call it. Um, the dimension data is free to change at will whenever necessary. We can also split the satellites by type of data or rate of change, and in fact, we don't allow hierarchies inside the satellites. And we don't allow degenerate satellites or satellites hanging off of satellites. We don't do those kinds of snowflake designs in the data vault. We try to keep it simple and flexible and easy to use and easy to, easy to scale. So all of these things are, are components that we have in the data vault. Now, the other thing that we have in the data vault is called a link table. And the link table is very, very similar to a factless fact. However, don't mistake it for a factless fact. The link table is based off of third normal form standard design called a many-to-many -many table or a relationship table. And that's exactly what a link table is. However, if you look at a factless fact, you'll notice that the factless fact is, in fact, pun intended, a many-to-many -many or a relationship table, right? So this is where we get the link table. So they're all one and the same thing. Now, what do we do with the actual facts, and what do we do with the actual, uh, say you have a degenerate dimension, and you've got descriptive data for the fact table, right? So on that, those particular cases, we hang those. Once again, we put all that information hanging off of a link table, and we put it in a satellite. 
So the satellite structure is a similar structure used throughout to represent descriptive information or fact information or degenerate descriptive information depending on where it sits and depending on what it hangs on. So this is how it works. So as far as the technical differences, there are quite a few. And I'm, again, I don't have time to dive into everything, uh, especially around the construction of business keys. But we'll get into those in future videos. Um, I'm Dan Listen, and thanks for watching this short lesson.